Starting in 1959, the Condor was an overnight fast freight service running between the cities of London and Glasgow that specialised in carrying all its freight in containers, its name derived from containers door to door. An offspring of the 1955 modernisation plan, which saw a number of modernisations across the British Railways network, the Condor was a goal that had been in the pipeline since World War I. It had always been the goal of the large four railway companies to reduce marshalling of goods to speed up delivery at larger, better equipped marshalling yards spread evenly across the country, which would allow for overnight next day delivery between yards, severely reducing transport time and therefore increasing turnaround times of the wagon stock needed. However, by the 1950s this target had grown to not only be more attractive than the rapidly growing road haulage industry, but also a reduction in operational costs by reducing the amount of manual handling needed in the freight's journey. The solution to this was to be containerization, removing the need for the network of railway goods sheds scattered across the country manually loading and unloading wagons. Preloaded containers were sent from the customers' factories and shops to the railway yards and loaded by cranes onto the waiting Conflat wagons. The plan called for the centralisation of freight services, which meant trains shuttling continuously between two marshalling yards or depots without the need to stop for time-heavy shunting operations. With the introduction of the Class 08 shunters in 1952, Shunting times had sped up in recent years, however it was still a lengthy process that British Railways saw had no place in a high-speed freight service operation. The call for containers also sped up the process at both ends, as their preloaded design meant that they were able to be rapidly transferred to awaiting lorries, who would provide the local flexibility to customers' warehouses and consumers, with the railway focusing solely on the rapid transfer between various parts of the country. However, unlike today's modern standardised shipping containers, British Railways used a much earlier version that had been pioneered by the Great Western Railway, the Railway Conflat, which were smaller, lighter, wooden containers resembling a standard railway wagon with its axles removed, including the curved roofline. Dating from the 1920s in design, they were perfectly sized for the needs of the time, with Conflat wagons equipped with vacuum braking on all four wheels, a non-standard feature at the time. These wagons were able to carry one B-type Conflat or two A-type Conflats. They would also be able to carry two AFP Conflats, which were slightly wider than the standard A Conflats due to being able to carry palletised frozen produce, most notably used by food producer Birdseye. The Condor was to be the top line service for this new containerised operation, with a single route of operation between the manufacturing hub of Glasgow and the consumers of central London. Return traffic back down to Glasgow would largely be the transportation of raw materials, supplied by London's vast docks. The Condor service would run between Hendon on the Midland Main Line to Gushets Fold Freight Depot, located near Glasgow's South Side Railway Station, and would hold 27 four-wheeled Conflat P wagons. These wagons were of a new design with roller-bearing axles, implemented to allow the faster running speeds and without the risk of a hot box, which referred to the axle box overheating. Condor Conflats could carry containers weighing up to 8.1 tonnes each, with the Conflats themselves being heavier at 36 tonnes, eventually earning their own TOPS code of FC for their weight. The Condor itself could hold 560 tonnes altogether, with the cost of hiring a Conflat in 1962 being between £16 and £18, or 350 and 390 in 2020 respectively. This cost also included road pickup and delivery by British Road Service's fleet of lorries inside Greater London or within 10 miles of Glasgow. The Condor service ran once a day in each direction, simultaneously departing at 7pm and arriving sometime early at 6am with a single halt at Carlisle to change over crews, rather than any limitation of the locomotives themselves. Condor ran overnight to obtain the clearest running, as with little to no passenger traffic for much of its journey, it would be prioritised over any local workings. 
The service itself carried a headboard, which was unique in that it featured a non-standardised BR typeface and featured two colours, maroon for the London Midland region and pale blue for the Scottish region. The service would be double-headed by pairs of the newly built Metrovic Type 2 Kobo locomotive, which undoubtedly many of you may recognise as Boko from a certain TV show. Producing 1200 horsepower, these locos were required to be used in pairs as the more powerful Type 4s, which were capable of producing between 2 and 3000 horsepower, were in short supply as dieselisation was still new to Britain at the time. The Kobos featured five drive axles compared to the standard four of the time, giving good traction for the Condor service and were fitted for red circle multiple working, meaning only one crew was required for operating both locomotives. The red circle multiple working system was not widely used on British railways at the time, compared to the much more well-known Blue Star, and very few classes used it otherwise, hence the requirement for matching Kobos. However, the history of the Metrovic is one of failure, as the locomotive was not a reliable performer, mainly due to a failing of its Crosley engine, but also some elements of its design, most notably their front windscreens. These windscreens wrapped around the corners of the cab, providing a better view sideward for the crew. However, the engine's vibrations could become enough to cause the glass panes to fall out of their frames. Eventually, cracking in the crankcases became evident to engineers, and the whole fleet was withdrawn for an overhaul a few years later. If the Kobos did fail, it was usually to be replaced by a Sulzer Type 2, as Metrovics were only stabled at either end of the service, not at stations or yards in between. In rarer cases, it was known for a Black 5 to assist with pulling the service, however in either of these cases, a second crew would be required as no multiple working could take place. The first Condor service began in the spring of 1959 and was not an immediate success, with August seeing the formation cut in half with a single locomotive hauling. However, slowly traffic grew and by the end of the year it was running at full capacity. It was in 1961 that the Metrovics were withdrawn for their overhauls, with the Derby Sulza Type 2s, later known as the Class 24s, taking over Condor duties. When the Metrovics, now known as Class 28s, returned, they had rebuilt engines and had lost their wraparound windscreens, replaced by flat glass which no longer fell out of its frames. In 1963, an additional service from Ashton in Birmingham to Glasgow was added. The first train departed on this service on the 17th of January 1963, hauled by a Class 24. However, it would not be long before all Condor services would find themselves hauled by various types of Type 4s. Over its lifetime, the Condor service had proven to be successful, but by 1965 services had ceased under the advice of the infamous Dr. Beeching. It was decided that all wagon load traffic would be replaced with container services, however these would be the newly introduced stackable shipping rectangular containers, not the conflats as used by the Condor. British Railways decided to go fully in on its new Freightliner service, with Dr Beeching planning 55 new container depots, with 17 of these completed by 1968. Many of Condor's existing customers adapted to the new Freightliner service, all managed by a new computer system called TOPS, allowing for a smoother operation of freight and its movement between depots. The Condor service is seldom remembered nowadays besides a well-known painting by railway artist Terence Cunio, who produced the famous Night Freight poster for British Railways. However, it should be remembered as an important step in the modernisation in freight on a network that had seen little change since its inception 120 years before. Thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this episode of Off the Rails, why not leave a like and consider subscribing so that you don't miss future videos.